I'm going to begin, Kevin. I mean, I'm I'm guilty of going into to this quite ill-informed, with quite ill-informed kind of misconceptions of, of who Whitney Houston was. As I sort of grew up at the same time when she was splashed all over the tabloid uh, newspapers. I just wondered about, did you, do you almost feel sometimes a duty as a filmmaker to, to, to challenge our own opinions and to un- uncover what you feel is really the truth of the person that we have, I don't know, the wrong idea of, of who they really are? That's what's interesting about documentaries is that the reality is never a cliche, you know. Nobody's life is just, you know, flat and boring and as expected. You dig into anyone at all, and I guarantee you'll find some unusual, strange, you know, maybe emotional bits and pieces. And I think, to your point about the preconceptions people have about Whitney, I had those preconceptions. When I was first approached by Simon Chin, the producer on this, and he asked me, you know, do you want to make a film about, about Whitney? I was pretty dismissive. And I was like, well, I'm not sure, you know, is there really an interesting film to be made out about her? Isn't she just this sort of terrible tabloid victim, you know, drug addict who nobody has any sympathy for? Um, and he said, no, well, you know, think a bit more about it. And because I respect him and know him a bit, I, I did. And I met with um, a few people who'd known Whitney, primarily Nicole David, who is Whitney's agent, uh, film agent for most of her career. Um, and. I gradually, gradually began to see there's something behind, there's something else going on here um, and it was intriguing. And I think it's, as with most of the films I've made, it's the sense of mystery, there's a sense of there is much more to this story than meets the eye, there's much more to this person than meets the eye that makes you want to do it. Because I mean, having obviously now, now seen it, you really sort of come to the realisation that she didn't really stand a chance, did she? No, she didn't stand a chance. And I, I think that there's something I, I noticed about everybody who uh, pretty much everybody I interviewed about her, they all loved her in this really strange way. They all had such profound feelings of wanting to protect her, and maybe some of them still wanting to protect her. And I think that's because there was something kind of innocent and childlike about her, even as things became very dark and difficult later on. And um, so, so you know, men, practically every man I interviewed was in love with her and thought that, oh, I can rescue her, I can protect her. And every woman kind of felt like she was their little sister. Um, so yeah, that was, that, that was the, very, really unusual. And you mentioned before about how you it always felt that you were trying to search for like, the, the truth of, of her story. I mean, did it, did it feel like you were, you were making a kind of detective documentary at times? Because it felt like as, as, we, as the film was progressing, we were getting closer and closer to understanding how, the, how she came to be the Whitney Houston we all, we all eventually knew her to be. That's, that's, you've obviously been reading my other interviews, but that's, that, you know, that's exactly what I wanted. I mean, what I wanted from the film was for it to feel like a, de- a detective story, like an investigation. I'm not sure if I started off like that, but as I began to be frustrated in trying to understand her, the, my questions and my sort of presence in the film became a, you know, bigger and bigger. And so I, le- I did leave in a lot of my questions. I left in some of the awkward moments with, inter- with interviewees because I wanted the audience to try and feel that they were with me in trying to un- uncover this. And I think it's just one of the funny tensions in documentary making that it's kind of like you want to present a great story, you know, that's cinematic and that's sort of neat and almost feels like a fiction film. But at the same time, it's the it's those um, inconvenient things, the spontaneous things that somehow give it life, make it feel like, oh, that really is real, that make the audience sort of, I think, really engage with the documentary. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what makes it such an appealing medium, isn't it? I guess it, for you as a documentary filmmaker, you make uh, sort of dramatised kind of fictional yeah. um, movies as well. But I mean, you, I guess you, you go on the same journey we go and you're learning as we are, which I guess it must make it such a fulfilling uh, undertaking for, as, for you as a filmmaker. It is. It's really fulfilling for that reason, because it's, 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 it's kind of a privilege for someone who's nosy to get to just ask any question you want and to try and under, understand and I know I've always, want, I've always enjoyed trying to, you know, just asking people nosy questions and trying, to, and trying to get to the bottom of why they made the decisions in life that they've made. And I guess it's the same thing that drives people who are journalists. It's that same basic, you know, you're interested in other people. You're interested in the, the big decisions that people have made. And um, it's, so to be honest, it's... It's such a privilege to move into a completely different world. The last film documentary I made was about a Chinese artist who blow things, blows things up with gunpowder. And um, I got to go to Beijing. I hung out with the Chinese Communist Party. And this time I'm in New Jersey hanging out with the most dysfunctional family in America. And, you know, that's, you get to live multiple lives. 
And uh, I mean, obviously, uh, along the course of this, one of the big surprises was you unveiling the ch- child abuse allegations mm. um, and, uh, uh, made against Dee Dee Warwick. I mean, that's out there now. And I was wondering what's happened as a result of that information now being out there. Have, have you have you had anyone contact you about that? Have, or, did, or did you try and contact anyone from, from her side? Obviously, she's no longer with us, but did you try and contact anyone that, that knew her very well to try and get involved in the documentary as well? I mean, what's what's been the repercussions of that information? I'm not sure there have been any repercussions. I mean, obviously, the, 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 there was a lot of discussion when we were making the film when, when we found this out, and that was really quite late in the process, you know, a few weeks before we finished cutting. Um, the, you know, we discussed, is it right to mention her name? How much should we talk about this in the film? And I think because of the current environment, the Me Too movement, the post Harvey Weinstein sort of era that we live in, it felt there wasn't much question now that we had to sort of name the name and, and really get this out there. Because that is the sort of current thinking on this kind of sexual abuse. And um, uh, we, I didn't show the film to the rest of the family. It was. Um, uh, uh, Pat Houston, who was our contact always with the family, who was Whitney's sister-in-law and her manager and looks after the estate, she uh, showed the film to Whitney's mother and to, to Dionne Warwick, and they weren't best pleased, but at the same time, they haven't tried to um, persuade me to take it out, or they haven't, they, they, you know, I think it's very traumatic for them. I mean, I, and it's, 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 um, uh, uh, it's an uncomfortable position to be in, in a way, as a filmmaker. I don't want to make the life of these people who have suffered an awful lot, I don't want to make it any worse. You know, they, 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 Sissy, Sissy Houston, Whitney's mother, has lost her daughter and her granddaughter. I, I don't want to sort of go with a microphone and say, how do you feel about the fact that she was abused? I, so what's she going to say? She's going to say, this is terrible. And it's not going to be very enlightening, I don't think. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.